I'm looking. <laughs> it's like a really thick pudding. As far as you can tell from the ends of the bone, that's, I'm pretty sure it's cooked through or close to it. And the main reason for that pink hue, oh, actually, no, I'm not so sure now. There's nothing really exciting about eating this thing, really. How can you say that? This is the most exciting thing that I've ever reacted to on this channel. Cover the goddamn chicken with something <laughs> so we don't see this. Chef Brian Sow here, not your typical chef, owner of Mission Sandwich Social, located right here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. And today I'm going to be reacting to Cooking with Jack's Italian Herb Chicken with Polenta with guest chef. Ed Cotton. Ed Cotton, welcome back to the show. Good to see you again, buddy. Good to be seen. You have been requested by the audience to come back on the show. That's a first. <laughs> I've never been requested to do anything. Despite what you may think, it was actually the audience who want to see you tortured more by reacting to more cooking with Jack. Are you are you ready for this? Uh, do I have a choice? No, not really. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm... I'm ready. So for those of you who haven't seen Ed before on the show, uh, we reacted to uh, Cooking with Jack's Lazy Man Lasagna. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we're going to be doing his chicken polenta dish. You ready for this, bud? Uh, yes, I am. I, I did a poll on the YouTube community. I said, what do you want to see Ed Cotton to react to? So I'm not a masochist. The audience. The audience is. You the guys one. are. They're, they're the ones that hate you. Well. Okay. But I know we just started, but you know, I had uh, Chef Paul Denamuel on, our mutual friend. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually had to start it off with saying like, Paul, I brought you on here, but just remember we are reacting to the food, not the person. <laughs> and I, I had to very, I had to specify that to him. Yeah, I'm sure you had to really go over a lot of things in detail with yeah. him. No, there was like a good like 15 minute powwow, yeah. you know, things I don't certain lines I don't want him to cross I, I'm not worried about that with you but no no it's I, I can keep it PG-13 yeah <laughs> so I haven't done international dishes in a long time and then all of a sudden boom boom these two Italian dishes hit me I didn't know which one to do so I decided to do both of them you saw the soup which is absolutely amazing and now we're doing something called polenta that's right it's really easy a few ingredients and we're going to be using some chicken with it because I wanted to plate it just right. So you need chicken to plate polenta just right? I believe so. I learned that in culinary school. Yeah, and we went to the same culinary school. I learned the same thing too. I may have not been in class for that, that, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Well, I know what you're trying to say, because funny thing, me too. I missed that exact same yeah, class, too. Yeah, I wasn't informed in, in the the Italian cookery class that you needed chicken in order to plate the polenta correctly. Cook it as kind of like a mashed potato, or you can kind of bake it and make it like a fluffy cake. So uh, let's get wrong started. there. Come on in, no. and I'll show you how this is going to be done. Not a lot of ingredients, so I'm going to start by cooking my chicken. I'm going to put some Italian herbs. Gonna do a little rosemary, a little thyme, a little oregano, maybe some basil. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm going to bake that, maybe some salt and pepper. And then I'm going to prepare the polenta. Would you put basil at the beginning like that? Probably not. I think the hard herbs are good. I would use fresh. Um, but like when I say hard herbs, I would say like, you know, the, the rosemary and, and uh, even sage and, and oregano and stuff like that and lots of olive oil yeah lots of olive oil definitely fresh i think uh basil would be better reserved for the end that burst of flavor like fresh basil flavor right towards the end yeah it really awakens everything let's talk polenta before he gets into it one of my favorite things dude pol polenta cooked properly is off the chain so but how, how would you do it ed cotton is this like one of those bubble gum like you can boil polenta you can fry polenta well don't forest gump it you know <laughs> i used to do this one dish it was a soft polenta infused with rosemary mm. finished with mascarpone cheese mm. and then i would do a really really insane wild mushroom ragu over the top oh. over the top with that you know all the, all the good mushrooms yeah. you know what i mean like orcinis and and you know morels and all sorts of great stuff oyster mushrooms putting that back on the spring on the menu on, in spring i could i Please. could just for me like only for me though not a problem okay all right i figured i figured it's polenta is a it's, it's a great it's it's a great thing uh even like uh garnishing uh like a 
like a marinated heirloom tomato salad. You make a, a hard polenta, and then when it, once it's cold, cut it into little squares or whatever, and just like lightly toss it in some rice flour or, or uh, a little wash with some uh, semolina, mm. and then fry it. Dude, it's just fun, fun sounds stuff. Sounds so good. So I'm excited about this one. Yeah, you, you and I both. So yeah. I didn't have polenta until I went to culinary school. I was introduced to polenta very late in the game. All my, you know. I, I had lots of Italian food as far as pasta sure, and sure. Stuff, like, stuff like that from my neighbors living in Flushing, Queens. But um, this was before Flushing, Queens became more Asian than Italian. But back then, it was more Italian and Irish. We have butter. We have got yellow cornmeal, chicken broth, Parmesan cheese, a couple cloves of garlic, some finely diced red onions, which I pre-diced yesterday, a little salt, a little pepper, and that's it. And this pot is what I'm going to use uh, today. It's one of the Rachel Ray cookware that I've been using all year long. Finest cookware on the planet. Thank God he's using that. It's going to come out that much, that much more, like, beautiful. Yes, it's going to have that Rachel Ray essence all over it. So far, so good. At the end of the year, I'll tell you all about the Rachel Ray cookware and how it held up. We'll look at it together. But this one right here, I have never used. Look, it's brand new. I just washed it out. So we get to use that today. Oh, did. All right, let's get this chicken in the oven because that's got to be fully cooked. Before. All right, as far as the ingredient set you saw there, I mean, any comments? The cornmeal. That's my only gripe. I would not really use that particular brand of, uh, of cornmeal to make a polenta. Right. I'm just a, a snob. Right, right. You're being a full-on snob. For people out there, if you can't get authentic Italian imported polenta, you know, cornmeal's your next yeah. next best thing. But certainly if you are going to make a dish called polenta, featuring polenta, I would imagine you should put in a little let more effort to get the real stuff. Yeah. 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 But I mean, in your experience, any difference between the two? It's all in like the milling and, and the flavor. Um, some some of these, even like the Anson Mills, like the, the flavor is completely different than uh, whatever the hell that that thing is. Yeah, and it usually, it, and I think sometimes too, it comes down to the varietal the varietal of corn that they use. Yeah. As well. The white polenta is fantastic as well, but you know, there's there's so many different varieties out there. But I always gravitate towards like. You know, something that's a little more artisan, mm -hmm. yeah, instead of mass produced. Right, right. If it's available for you, go that route for sure. Yeah. Not, you know, not law, but definitely a good rule of thumb, I would say. Yeah. Should use white onion. Is it the end of the world? Not really, but as far as the overall ingredient set, yeah, I mean, that's, you can make a decent polenta out of that. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do some rosemary, a little salt. Rosemary was in the grinder, grinder. I guess. black pepper. Okay, he's using dried rosemary, Ooh, not oregano. A dried oregano is okay. Still prefer fresh. Little basil. And you're asking why am I putting all the greens on? Is because since Italian polenta, Italian seasonings. That's uh, mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we know. Yeah. All right, we have to reevaluate how we've been making our Italian food. Anything Italian, you just put on all that stuff, and it's instantly Italian. Well, if you put soy sauce in anything it instantly makes it chinese yes you know i mean there's i know it's so stupid yeah <laughs> and then a little like the korean chili paste boom yeah 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 automatically korean it's korean yeah, barbecue it's like that's a, a tablespoon of korean chili paste then it's yeah if you take a pizza and put gochujang on it's automatically korean okay and a little time I always and have you time and i both time. said we'd prefer yeah, yeah. fresh spices yeah all right let's get this in the oven and then we'll get started on the polenta so no oil or anything? No oil, nothing. Yeah, that's a little concerning. If it's Italian, you got to have some good olive yeah, oil, yeah. you know what I mean? Not a thousand percent. I mean, the way I would have done it, chop all the fresh herbs, minus basil. We would put that at the end, mix it with the chicken, maybe yeah. even put a little bit of garlic in there, yeah. you know? Definitely extra virgin olive oil and let it sit overnight. Here, he's just going completely dry, and he only did one side. Mm. I think that was a missed opportunity. He should have done true. both. Unless he has something up his sleeve that we don't know about. There's a reason why. That's true. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on this. The only thing I didn't do was prepare the garlic, so we're gonna get a few of those going. Got some big bling and, uh, there, though. Finally yeah, diced up. Also not DOH approved mm. with all the jewels on there. Creamy and fine, so. You don't see ingredients in it. So the better you can chop up your garlic, just take your time. 
There we go. You and I don't have the time to take our time. Start with a little bit of olive oil in the pan. It's got the All olive right. oil now. I'm using a medium high heat. Recipe's down below. Take all my onions, pour them in. I'm on. Come on, boys and girls. Looks like he's going to sweat there. his onions. Yeah. As you said, I we're going to saute these till translucent. Remember that term we talked about? Okay. Just a few minutes. Sweating it out, you know, concentrating the flavor a little, removing some of the moisture, mellowing out the alkalinity of the onion. Yeah, okay. Yeah, spot on. Should Make salt sure here you're a little using bit. Make sure you an oven safe pot, okay? If you don't know what an oven safe pot is, it's a pot that can go in the oven up to 450 degrees. What? <laughs> I did not know that. Oven safe, oven safe pan you can put in the oven. I, mean, I learn something new every day. Place your garlic in there. Make sure you get it all out. Don't ever want to skimp on garlic. No. I love no. garlic. I agree with that. There you go. And then go ahead and saute that garlic in there. My wife is upstairs. I can already smell this. It smells amazing. She's hiding from you. <laughs> She's locked in the room, chained to a radiator. <laughs> She's not going anywhere. Hey, if you're enjoying this content, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. But if you want to be extra nice, consider becoming a patron. By becoming a patron, you get to take advantage of some awesome perks like early access to new episodes, patron exclusive content, and even extended versions of certain episodes. Be sure to visit the link in the description below for more info. And with that out of the way, turn your flame back on high. You want to bring this to a boil. Okay, now that it's at a boil, here comes the tricky part. I'm going to lower it back down to medium. Keep the boil going. So far, Ed Cotton. Well, one, I didn't hear him say any uh, quantities on the, the amount of chicken stock was inside there. So what's really important when making polenta, and I've effed it up a bunch of times, is the correct ratio. How much liquid per, like, is it... Is it uh, two cups of liquid to a half a cup of polenta? You think that it's very soupy and, and all that, and then next thing you turn turn your, your back to it. It's a brick. It's like beyond spackle. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yes, it, this is one of those things that does require precision. And also, you know, polentas vary from brand to brand. It may, you know, you may notice this brand needs a little bit more water or a little less water because it cut comes down to the milling process. It comes down to the varietal of corn as well. So yes, like this is one of those things you really want to have your recipe right. You know, you yeah. need some experience with it. But you said something that's really important to me and I try to emphasize, which is that um, that you failed at this numerous times. Oh yeah. I always say at the end of every episode, don't be afraid to fail because it can only make it stronger, which is true. like the foundation of every good chef's career. Right, you got there because you literally fucked your way up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I have a funny. I don't know if I should tell the story. Please tell the story then. You you can't you can't say that and not tell the story. It's because I want to tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> so years ago, we're talking years ago in the '90s. Okay, when I first started cooking. So my hollandaise broke. Hollandaise is notorious. A, a notoriously tough sauce to it make. It is. And also tough to keep and hold on the line. You have to make it fresh. Yes, so. it's very temperamental. Very temperamental. Like That's me. the word. So my hollandaise sauce broke and we were doing like a grilled pork chop with polenta yeah. and stuff like that. So I took a little bit of the polenta, the soft polenta, mm -hmm. nice creamy polenta. I put that into a bowl and I didn't know enough how to like um, bring back a broken hollandaise sauce. Like, you know, there's all sorts of tricks to right. bring it back from being broken. So I took a little of the polenta, I put it into a bowl, and I drizzled. I tried to... You tried to fix holidays with polenta? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Obviously, I wasn't thinking. Yeah. But uh, I tried to slowly add the... The, br the broken hollandaise to the bowl of the creamy polenta to try to get it like looking like a, a hollandaise yeah. sauce so I could get through the rest of service yeah. without anyone knowing that I broke my hollandaise sauce. Needless to say, 
It didn't work out. What did the chef say? Did you actually put that up at the win- up 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 on the window? I, I don't know. This is so many years ago. I I don't think. I think I looked at it and I was like, I can't, I'm not fooling anybody with this. Yeah. To slowly incorporate the cornmeal, little at a time. There we go. I'm not a fan of those red onions. Alex, turn your flame off. Oh, that's beautiful. Or the whisk. Is that gorgeous? Okay. Here's what you're going to do. Cover it. I mean, he was correct there. Put it in a little bit of yeah. at a time. Keep it moving, right? Because by keeping it moving, you're not going to get clumps. Yeah. Place in the oven, 35 to 40 minutes. You're going to mix every 10 minutes. Put this in the oven at 350. Mix every 10 minutes to prevent it from clumping. Okay, let's get this in the oven right now. Yeah. All right, so this is where I have a problem. Yes. <laughs> Please, let us know your problem. Okay, I've done stovetop, yeah. okay? Uh, I don't necessarily think the baking thing, you can achieve a great soft, creamy polenta just by keeping it on the stovetop. Yeah. And, and every so often, just coming by and just giving it a little stir and this and that. I don't think it's you need to bake it, but... If you're going to be doing other things, I guess you could you could throw it in the oven, but I've never done that before. And you've been cooking for how long? Uh, 30, 30 something years. Ed's been cooking a, a, a full decade longer than I have, not to make you feel old, but uh. in 30 years, he has not baked polenta once. Uh, uh, in my entire career, I have never seen polenta, you know, if you want the creamy polenta, yeah. I've never seen it go into the oven. It's always on the stovetop. And you just, like you said, come by and give it a quick stir. Yeah. But he also said to prevent it from clumping. I mean, it shouldn't, if anything, it would have clumped earlier when he was adding the the, the cornmeal to the pot. It's 35, 40 minutes later. So let's see what happens to the polenta. Here. Look at this. Ready? Pooyah. Ooh. Look at that steam. Give this a good mix. Hey, hey. Yeah, it's smooth. Beautiful. For the most part. Minus the red onions. All right, so now's the time to... Whoops. Okay. Handle's hot. Don't touch the handle. What did he say? He said the handle's hot. I think he went to touch the... Oh, I thought he said it was hammer time. <laughs> you can't touch it. As you're stirring this, you're going to want to use your pot holder, okay? Oh. Ah, uh, yes. Put in your butter. Nice. That's, that's the best part, right? Black pepper. However much you want. Look at that butter melt, baby. Salt. And get it all incorporated. I don't know if that was a piece of paper that fell in there. It looked like a piece of like butter wrap. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, what? What is, that's not salt. Uh, okay, all right. Foreign object. Salt. <laughs> and get it all incorporated. Always use your mitt. Yes. You're going to have a tendency to want to grab the handle with your hand. Do not take your hand out of the mitt this whole process, okay? Uh, I, I, I feel like that's just a lot of filler. You know, I mean, I think that would be very obvious. Just my opinion. Okay, here we go. All right, all right. Put the cheese in. Parmesan cheese, okay. You know, what I think is Parmesan cheese. Incorporate that now. All right. I'll give it a shot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll take a spoonful. Yeah. I, I don't think that'll taste terrible. I don't think it'll taste bad. Certainly, I've seen better polentas made just on the visual visual cues. Yeah. But uh, no, that's that's not half bad. Mm. Mm-mm. Look, look at those dry herbs on the plate. I mean, it's all about do the, the best presentation. I can to serve a big glob of this right in the middle. Glob. Never refer to food as a big glob of something. Ooh. Oh, this is this is what this is what the people that, right? have been telling me about. Uh, huh. I mean, that's that's art. It's a very, very pink, very pink chicken. And it's. Just... I mean, when you look at the edge of the bones, it looks like it's cooked through. But I think it's it it didn't get a full Maillard reaction or you know a caramelization because the oven was at three fifty. And there you go. That's this it. Is Italian herb chicken over polenta. <laughs> Oh my God. So my honey's home today, so she's gonna try this for lunch. But for right now, let's, uh, let me just try the polenta by itself first. 
because that's mainly what we talk. It's like a, wow, it's totally solidifying. Look. I'm looking. <laughs> it's like a really thick pudding. Oh my goodness. Thoughts, Mr. Ed Cotton. Oh, well, God uh, rest my grandmother. <laughs> If she, she's looking down at this moment that we're watching this video, yes, and she's she's in disgust of, <laughs> of this this wonderful man Jack calling this Italian chicken. It, it's it's definitely not an Italian dish. Sorry to tell you. Yeah, yeah, I, I I fully agree with you on there. It is a. I've done some extensive travel in my life, and and I have not seen this particular dish in the countryside of Italy. Are you sure there was a part of the country you didn't visit? Maybe. Um... People have been talking about this video for so long. They've been wanting me to check it out. Jack is notorious for undercooking his chicken. The video that you saw was probably the most edible thing he's ever made on, on you know, as far as the content that I've watched. Yeah. But there was one video in particular where the chicken was just completely raw. And I was, I was expecting that to be the case for this video as well. But like I said, if you look at the bones, if you want my opinion, this dish, I mean, let's just put that out there. But as far as the cookery and what everyone's telling me in the comments section, as far as you can tell from the ends of the bone, that's, I'm pretty sure it's cooked through or close to it. And the main reason for that pink hue, oh, actually, no, I'm not so sure now. That looks like really right there, really like uh, translucent which isn't a very good sign when it comes to chicken. I am digging really hard, guys, to, 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 to find something re redeeming about this. I mean, this is something that you'd see at, at, in a steam table at a bodega. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Minus the polenta. Right, right, minus the polenta. Yes, actually, that's very true. Yeah, They would put this as Italian chicken and yeah. put, pretty much put this exact thing. But the main thing is that the oven wasn't hot enough to give it that proper Maillard reaction. Yeah. If he coated it with some oil, it probably would have, you know, would have transferred the heat better and mm -hmm. actually given it, given it some brown. Yeah. That polenta is definitely way too gummy and it is not soft at all. Very dense and uh, definitely not enough stock. And I think it's because he was eyeballing it. There's nothing really exciting about eating this thing, really. I mean, there's no real... How can you say that? This is the most exciting thing that I've ever reacted to on this channel. Yeah, I, I mean, it needs some like, a tomato slow cooked tomato sauce yes. or something like yes. that spooned over the top of it i mean there's so many more things that you could do with this yes. thing and like he this is he's extremely proud of this yeah. <laughs> so cover the goddamn chicken with something <laughs> yeah. so we don't see this first thing that happens a little bit of the cornmeal comes through and then a little sweetness a little salty the garlic and then the cheese that is a that doesn't even look as good as it tastes. Now wow. it looks good. It tastes amazing. All right, so let's try it now with a piece of chicken. All right, here we go. Chicken with plant on top, and it's burning hot. Mhm, mm burning hot. <laughs> mm. Oh my goodness, I gotta go. I I'm so glad that this was like an educational. A very informative, educational video. Oh, it definitely taught us a few things. Yes. That was a percent. I mean, I'm going to go dig back into my, my, my history of, like, my ancestors and everything like that and try to pull up this recipe. And, and again, you clearly didn't go to every part of Italy. So, I mean, you, you missed this. Dish. I'm going to have to email them, ask them where this dish was inspired, what part of Italy yeah. this dish was inspired from. I have nothing I would, else. I, I'm, I'm out. I would try a spoonful of it just to say I tried it, but... Yeah. <laughs> I do want to give a special shout out to my newest sous chef level patrons, Mark, Felix Hansen, The Dark Hands. Guys, thank you so much for your support. You, along with all the patrons, really do make a difference on this channel. And remember, by becoming a patron, you get to take advantage of some awesome perks like early access to new episodes, patron exclusive content, and even extended versions of certain episodes. All right, guys, well, what did y'all think? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs>
<laughs> and uh, also let us know in the comments below if you want to have Ed back and what you would like us to react to. And uh, with that said, Ed, before we go, let the people know who you are, where you work, and what you're all about. Well, I'm Ed Cotton, and uh, you can find me at Jack and Charlie's down in the West Village here in New York City. Always cooking. Check me out on Instagram as well. I'm always posting some stuff. Uh, not only does it look good, it actually tastes good, too. <laughs> Many moons ago, I was also on... Uh, Top Chef season seven, which was I think almost 14 years ago. Yeah, just just a small little thing, you know, a top making it to the finals of Top Chef. No big deal. Runner up. I'll always be the runner up. Would you be open to reacting to your final episode of Top Chef on this show? Yeah, I'll keep. Uh, I'll definitely keep all the swearing and and all the curse words. If you haven't seen Top Chef. Season seven. Well, maybe that was a good thing you didn't see it. Maybe. I, like most people haven't seen me lose on Chopped, you know, but now everyone's going to look it up and know how I epically uh, was the first one Chopped. That was like my only goal was to not be the first one Chopped. <laughs> that was my goal on Top Chef. You didn't want to be the first one to, yeah. to go at all. I was more stressed out about that. <laughs> Ed, so good to have you back, my friend. Always good to be here. Before we close this out, my band Lost Becomes will be performing April 28th on Long Island at Amityville Music Hall together with Resistor, b -Fell, Endless, and Patterns of Decay. Come out, hang out. I would love to meet you. Make sure you visit the link in the description below for tickets. Remember, guys, don't be afraid to fail because it could only make you stronger. And with that said, I'm Chef Brian Tao, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon. Say bye to the wide cam, Ed. Behind you. We'll see ya. Hey.